I did pull up the CNN article about the Karen trailer, and it's actually getting flack because people are claiming they're just ripping off Get Out. No, the difference is Get Out was a good movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to make any... I haven't seen, obviously, Karen yet. The trailer doesn't look very good. But Get Out is a good movie about the fears of assimilation, right? It's the, the fear that when you assimilate into a culture, you lose your soul. So that... And it made fun of white liberals, which I got a kick out of. Specifically, right, we voted for Obama, but they're the, the evil people. <laughs> they're the evil people. Yeah, but it, so it's... It actually, I thought it was a kind of original movie. I got a kick out of it. This, at least from the trailer, I can't judge the movie, just looks like it's it's falling into the myth mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. evil Karen. Michael, I've seen the trailer, and um, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. This will be the Citizen Kane of our generation. Oh, my God. Did you see the angles? The Citizen Karen. <laughs> Citizen <laughs> Karen. Citizen <laughs> Karen. <laughs> I love it. Did, yeah, you see, did, you, did you show the photo of this, yeah, though? Yeah, I did. Look at this. Oh, oh dude, it's so, it's so silly. It's Have you seen um, The Hunt? You yeah. know, I wanted to, but I thought it didn't it get pulled. I thought they, they brought it back. They, they ended up publishing. Oh, it. They did publish. I, I thought it was great. It. it was good. I it, loved the idea. The idea was, was well. So, so initially, the hunt, the trailer was liberals kidnapping conservatives and then hunting them. Yeah. And so my initial reaction was like, this is not the time oh, yeah. to be fanning the flames <laughs> of this stuff. Even Donald Trump was against it. Yeah. I I, I, I I changed my mind later on when I when I was like, you know, I shouldn't be against artful depictions and I shouldn't play that game about, you know, criticizing a movie I haven't seen. And then it turns out when I watched the movie, it was actually really good. Yeah, well, because it's, it's, I don't think it's advocating that the liberals go out and kidnap. They're the bad no. guys. They're the yeah. bad guys. Right? They're the, they're, so, so it's actually like, you, you've got two different factions in this movie, snooty liberal elites who are, who are just, they hate yeah. these right-wing conspiracy theorists so much they want to kill them. Yeah. And then you have just dumb right-wing conspiracy theorists where you're kind of annoyed by them believing stupid things, but they're not bad people. Well, they're is, doofy people. This is what's actually giving me hope. You know, you say that Steve Bannon says, we're winning, and, uh, you know, I, I'll believe it when I see it. I've been, t- you know, I, I've been burned too many times, yeah, folks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but the thing that does give me hope, when these people of all different colors, parents of all different shapes and sizes all around the country show up to yell about critical race theory. I I see your point. I think it's a fair one that we shouldn't be arguing with their language and that's a problem. Sure. And we can try to fix that. But the very fact that these people are showing up, these ordinary Americans, and then snooty elites, radical elites, make fun of them, call them, I don't know, you might say deplorable, irredeemable, bitter clinger, or whatever. And you are further alienating the common sense American people from this ruling class that absolutely despises them. That is, in real time, a win for conservatives. Yes, yes. Uh, and that, that, I think Bannon's point is when these children come back from school on day one and mom says, what did you learn in school? That you're evil. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, come again. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm interested, though, um, in the same, in the same. I, I do want to talk about the Loudon stuff, but we'll get to that in a bit. In, in terms of movies like this, this Karen one, considering yeah. how, like, really over the top the trailer is I'm wondering if that'll have a similar effect if if people start seeing movies like this where it display I mean this is, this is it this is culture right in the movie The Hunt the liberal elite are the bad guys I'm gonna a spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it you, you care if I spoil it for you spoil it the woman who's leading the liberals is kidnapping people because they were spreading conspiracy theories about her online and her friends decided to, to help her out it turns out one of the women who was kidnapped, I think she was like former military, yeah. and it was the wrong name. So what it turns out is this innocent woman was being harassed and they were trying to kill her and she had nothing to do with their politics. And I thought that was a really interesting message based mm-hmm. on what we're seeing in the political landscape. Regular people who don't care, who don't want to be involved are being forced into it and accused of being racist and being yeah. monsters and now are being forced to fight for their lives. Yeah. So when I see something like this Karen movie, a lot of people have already said Karen is a, is a racial slur and you shouldn't say it. I've had people email me like, Tim, don't use that word. Yeah. I and mean, I'm I guess like, it literally is a racial, I, I'll say it, yeah, I, you know, but it is a racial slur. It, it references specifically yeah. like... White chicks. Yeah, like Certain white... Certain age, yeah. And a sort be- of ageist. A, a, well, a Becky is a young Karen. Yeah. Exactly. A Becky, that's what they've been yeah. saying. That's true. And, and so I, I wonder though, how many women named Karen yeah. had no no issues in politics, didn't care, and then all of a sudden started feeling bad Dude. Because yeah. people were insulting them based on their name. My friend's daughter's name is Isis. <gasps> oh, <laughs> man. She was named before the yeah. action. Oh, in the Middle man. East. That's, yeah. that's that well, right. so yeah. there was a there was a meme of um, there, there was a meme of, an, of, a, of a mom. Yeah. 
and it was like a strict mom meme. I can't remember exactly what it was. And it was a woman like sitting down in a photo that people used in these old school memes with like the sunburst behind it. And it would say like, you know, makes you clean your room and then grounds you or something like that. And the woman in the photo was like, I'm not like that at all. I'm like a nice person. And people are using this image of me Aww. to represent something nasty. I have to wonder if Hollywood keeps making movies that insult regular Americans simply because their name is Karen. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not saying they keep making Karen movies. I'm saying if, if they do things like this that insult and deride people, is this the kind of thing that's going to make someone go, I don't, I don't feel good. Well, You're I, making me feel bad. I reject you. I, I hope that that is the case because it, it really uh, it pains me to hear these stories that you're mentioning of you know, someone who says, well, I, I, I'm not like that. I'm not one of them. I'm one of the good Karens or whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm the good ISIS. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, you have to come to the realization if you are in any way conservative, and by the way, it's not even on the racial politics if you're just white. If you're black, but you go along with the conservative point of view, you are considered just as bad, if not worse. worse. Same thing if you're, I guess, if it's, you're a it's, traitor. It's the apostates that are yeah. a bigger threat. Yeah, and, and I think what all these people need to recognize is the radical left hates you. You are not, you can't charm your way out of it. You can't reason your way out of it. I know there's been a lot of talk now on the internet about whether or not one should engage in debates. Then there were sort of Crowder got ambushed by some libs or something. And there was, there was all of this debate me coward and all this kind of right. stuff. <laughs> I don't feel any compunction about uh, turning down a debate with someone who hates me. Because what's the what is the point of that debate? If I if I feel something productive can come out of that, I'll do it. But I don't feel any reason. Well, to there. Do th th this is really fascinating, especially in terms of the Crowder stuff, because, you know, Ethan Klein is not a, uh, a political individual. Yeah. He was say making comments about Stephen Crowder. I don't know how it started. Um, do, you, do Do you guys know how it started or what, what, what the issue was? Oh, how? yeah. What happened? Yeah. So. Uh Ethan was saying that you don't need to do any of your own research. You just trust the CDC, whatever they say. You don't even have to do any homework. And his wife is just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, and I was like, what? What? They're telling they have like and, millions and, and of people. And then Crowder responded? Or yeah, what? he had issues with that. He's like, why would you tell people to not do their own homework? That yeah. doesn't make sense. That's actually against, uh, uh, I think that's, that might be against YouTube's rules. Interesting. Mm. To say not to question anything? It, well, no, it's, it's it, that's... that's it, um, just to tell people how to think about it? You need to tell... Uh, YouTube's rules are that you can't discourage people from seeking the expert uh, medical opinions. Oh, interesting. So the CDC might, YouTube might be like, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, you can blindly but, follow them, but nobody. Yeah. No, no, but I think, like, YouTube says you can't discourage people from talking to medical experts yeah. for advice. <laughs> and saying you don't have to do anything, just follow the CDC. Those aren't your doctors. Oh, right. So I wonder. I mean, anyway. You should have debated Ethan. Well, so... Yeah. Uh, well, Ethan isn't a political figure. He's right. a drama grifter. Like yeah. his whole thing is like pop I had never heard comedy. of him. I had no even the other guy. Yeah. I hadn't hadn't uh, seen. He's really. interesting because they're kind of under the radar, but they're hugely popular. They just weren't like ever front and center mainstream. They kind of came up on they quieter. Got huge, they get they get like millions of views yeah, in their podcast. massive massive shows. So so the issue though is this is why I would say you got to be careful about who you do debate. Like we're gonna we're gonna have Vosh back on. Okay, uh, you're familiar with him. He's like he's a leftist uh, YouTube personality. I've heard of him. I haven't seen his stuff, but I have heard he's a he's a socialist or he's. A, I, I believe he's a socialist. Okay. He's, he's 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 a lefty uh, gamer, and yeah. then we're also um, planning on having on another uh, a, a few other leftist personalities, people who actually I think want to engage in the uh, robust challenge of a good debate. Like I think Vosh loved it because he yeah. got a bunch of clips where they said I was dumb, and of course we got clips where they were like he's dumb, but I. I think we had, we had a lot. It was like four hours. Yeah. But there are some people like the guy who ambushed uh, Stephen Crowder. This guy's a con man. Okay. Th this guy's whole yeah, shtick yeah. is to generate drama. And so the issue is Stephen Crowder wants to engage in a legitimate conversation with Ethan Klein. Yeah. Ethan Klein being a drama channel. Yeah. Just turn the cam camera off, runs away, and then says, here you go. Here's drama. So Crowder walked right into that one. I think Crowder was correct to say, "Hey Ethan, let's 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 talk." Yeah. And then uh, when he released the full audio, you actually see they were being very nice to each other and they were like talking about family. And then Ethan goes like, "Ha ha!" And I got gotcha. you. Ambushes Crowder with a guy who's known for not getting a lot of traffic. Yeah. And for trying as hard as possible to get bigger channels to debate him so he can get views. So Crowder's like, "I have no obligation to give you the time of day. You've been blacklisted by so many other channels. They refuse to talk to you." And, I, and I'll tell you this. Behind the scenes, a bunch of podcast networks have already blacklisted. I'm not, I'm not saying his name on purpose. Yeah. Because he doesn't, this is what he tries to do. He tries to use drama to get attention. Oh, no. He's been blacklisted by a bunch of very big podcasts, even some more mm. lefty ones, because he's viewed as a drama baiter yeah. who tries to get attention by just 
causing fights and stuff like that. Yeah, but the, you know, the right opens themselves up to these kinds of attacks when they go into the sort of uh, the free marketplace of ideas must always prevail and we must always debate everything with everybody and we can never cancel or ostracize anybody. And I think that's not true. That's never been true. I, 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 not only do I have no obligation to engage with somebody who's just a, a shyster or some kind of jerk, you know, I, there's no re it's actually counterproductive to do that. No one will learn anything. No honesty will be this, this, this is why I say um, from this point forward, yeah. I think it should be clear to everybody, Ethan Klein should be off limits for any, any uh, legitimate political uh, podcast. Of course, the left will probably engage with him because they're going to be like, hey, it's an opportunity to get views yeah. and they like what he did. But for anybody who is moderate, anti-woke or wants to have a legitimate conversation. So this would be like intellectual dark web types as well as any other legitimate news, news outlet. You, you, you can't do it. Yeah. Not, with, not with somebody who's willing to poison the political re d discourse for personal gain. Well, it's, you, you think about how dumb most debates are. It's really sad because not that long ago, you go back like 30 years, there were pretty popular debates that would air on TV or certain yeah, areas. Yeah, Burroughs was, was pretty well known. Yeah, or you think Firing Line or those kind of shows. And now they're just really dumb, and it's just like two heads screaming at each other for five minutes on cable TV or something. Right. And I just think I, it's so degrading. There, there's a political rule that I, I learned years ago, and I think I violated it a couple times at my own peril. Never wrestle with a pig. If you wrestle with a pig, you will both get dirty, but the pig will like it. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.